Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be here with Tad Hargrave, longtime friend, colleague, mentor, um, and just all around good guy and um, has helped a lot of my clients and students. And I think a lot of you watching this probably have heard of Tad. If you haven't, well, hopefully this will be a, a good experience to at least give us a give give you zero point. 5% of, <laughs> of everything Tad does because he has got a lot of amazing content and um, yeah, perspective shifting uh, mm. ideas that have helped a lot of people. So um, Tad, your website is marketingforhippies.com. And of course, you've got the YouTube channel, um, which you're very active on, Facebook page, Instagram. And so I'll put that all in the, in the links below. Uh, folks who are here, if you no tad want to say hi please comment below and let us know you're here and uh, tad so we're going to talk about um point of view mm -hmm. which is something that has been i think you know really transformational for a lot of service providers to better understand how to market themselves better and uh and recently you have been um teaching about the three cases we all need to make in our marketing. Yeah. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, where do you want to start? Well, yeah, maybe let's 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 talk about point of view first, sure. uh, and then we can get into the three cases just to contextualize it. Um, yeah. It just occurred to me years ago that people, there's a lot of ways to say it, you know, but if they don't buy the course. If they don't buy the concept, they're not going to buy the course. If they don't buy the premise, they won't buy the promise. If they don't buy the, your diagnosis, they're not going to buy your prescription. Um, that just feels so true. You know, if they're not convinced by the logic of your approach, then when it comes time to actually buy the incarnated version of that logic, there's no rationale. Like, you know, if you went out for dinner um, with somebody and and you were really struggling with a problem, and it was really painful. And then they started sharing their advice. And it was just the worst advice. And you only stick around in the conversation because you're like, this is atrocious. I mean, it's the kind of thing where they say, you know, uh, the thing you got to do with uh, social media is just, you know, just got to just attack everybody, call everybody names. That's the secret. You know, you're like, what? Or they... uh you know, you've got a, a health issue and they say the thing you need to do is move your body less. That's the problem. People move too much. You gotta be just still all the time. Stop drinking water. Water's a crutch. Replace that with soda pop. And you're just, anyway, everything they're saying is, has no credibility for you. It just seems mad. And you're just sitting there. You order more drinks because like, I just have to see where this is going to go. But then at the end, they say, you know, I could help you. I've got some packages and some programs that I offer. You know, you just you. It doesn't matter. And even if their pitch was really smooth, even if they did a really great job laying out the package and they did checked every box of a good pitch, you don't care. But imagine you go for dinner with this person, uh, or you know you're out with friends and you're talking with them, and you share, yeah, I've been really struggling with this thing, and they ask you a lot of questions, and they. Um, and then they say, well, are, are you open to some thoughts? And you say, yeah. And they say, well, I work with people on this. And in my experience, often what's really going on underneath the surface is this. Um, and, you know, I've worked with clients and they just start giving the logic of, of what that issue is really about and what it takes to resolve it. And everything they say makes sense to you. And they say, you know, you may have noticed you also have this symptom or that symptom. That's, I do have that. Yeah, that's often very common that goes with this. And by um, the end of, you know, the dinner, uh, you're just entranced and so impressed. And then they say, uh, and they leave and they say, if you wanted to work with, ah, yeah, never mind, never mind, I got to get going. You would say, wait, 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 do you have a card? Before you go away, mysterious masked man, you know, you would want to know. And all this to say that people completely misunderstand in marketing. Um, where to put their effort. And they think what they need is skills in pitching, being more persuasive and charming, overcoming objections. 
And that sale is usually gained or lost way before. Right, right. Oh, my. Uh, and this... <laughs> And we don't have to go to dinner with every person, <laughs> right? The, this, is, this is all happening. The dinner conversation is all happening now via Facebook Live, YouTube videos, totally. Instagram, you know, medium posts, uh, right. your, your live live workshops to groups, sure. um, yeah. uh, online summits. So, yeah, webinars. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, little social media posts that get shared, whatever. It's like you're making you're clarifying what you're calling you know, so your, your diagnosis of the yeah. issue right like we we help our clients have a particular transformation we want them to mm -hmm. i mean you talked a lot about this we want to help them go from island a is their current situation to island b which is where they want to go whatever that means uh, healing or um a reaching a goal or having an experience um having a transformation of some kind and you uh what you're what you've been talking about is well they, they're not going to get on the boat <laughs> if they don't trust the boat right if they don't trust the captain they don't trust the boat not going to get on the boat and if they don't trust the route that you take if they don't trust that they're like yeah. why would you go in this season this is monsoon right. season why would you possibly <laughs> they have to trust yeah the, the boat the captain and your approach to the whole journey uh, they they had there has to be some resonance there uh, yeah otherwise yeah. all this work on it's just putting lipstick on a pig you know yeah yeah and uh so i like how you say it's that you got they gotta trust your diagnosis your your potential clients if they are to become clients they have to trust your diagnosis of the issue that they're coming to you with they have to trust your prognosis yeah. which is if you don't work on the issue this tends to be what happens this is, this is the this is the typical result if you're not working on this stuff it's not that you're trying to scare them or trying to create you know pain yeah. for them or anything but it's just just to mention you know hey it, maybe it won't be that painful it just won't be blah you know it just yeah. that's the typical situation i mean and maybe some of the symptoms you're already experiencing and now that's that's the result of the diagnosis and then they, if they trust your diagnosis, they trust, they understand the prognosis, they agree with you on it. And then, of course, they're much more likely to trust your prescription, as you say. Yeah. Yeah. So talk about that because, and, yeah. and, and isn't that what most service providers just focus 100% on? It, wow, good point. Interesting. Yeah, out of those three, they just get jump right to the prescription. Yeah, and well, but just to say about the prognosis, also the prognosis is also includes if you do handle it, here's what can happen. You're sort of defining as uh, realistically as possible the possibilities and the limitations in their situation. You know, so it's like, look, you have this physical condition, and you're never going to get full mobility back in this joint. Um. But more is possible with professional help, more is possible than you might think. Um, there are some limits and there are some possibilities. And you're just trying to help them in a realistic way get a grasp on that. And and you and you can tell people, look, somebody else may disagree and somebody else may be able to help you get more results than that. I'm just saying for me, from what I understand, how I could help you, these are the possibilities and limitations we're working with. So that's good for people to know. I don't I think I've ever said it this way, but that's it. it's helpful for people to understand this person I'm talking to, this is the range of, of uh, possibilities we're dealing with. So then you can decide if you want to work with them or not. Now, they may go to somebody else who says, oh, yeah, absolutely. We can solve this problem. And, you know, it's just a sham. But that builds your credibility because then they come back to you and said, this person promised me the moon. And uh, and that didn't work out, and they took my money and and laughed all the way to the bank. And I think you were right in your prognosis. And so, can we? Yeah, you know... yeah man. Um, I wish more people <laughs> in our communities had come to us sooner, right, Dad? <laughs> it's like well, I'm so... <laughs> sure you get those messages. I mean, when people say that to you and I directly, of I wish I'd found you a decade ago. Yeah. As all of us have people in our lives, we like, why did I have to go through all these other monkeys before I came to? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, people tend to just jump to the prescription. And th there's a few challenges with that. One is 
how do you know it's the right prescription if you haven't done a good diagnosis? So there's every chance that you are selling things to people where it's not a fit, which means it's not going to help them, which means you're, you're going to get bad word of mouth or mediocre word of mouth. And there's an opportunity cost in that. Um, but number two, uh, that's where the trust is built, is in the diagnosis. That's either in a one-on-one -on -one formal diagnosis. I mean, if you go to a doctor and they ask you two questions and give you drugs versus you go to a doctor and they spend an hour or two with you and they're just asking you questions, well, try this, try that. What, do you have this symptom? And you can tell they're really trying to figure it out until they say, wait a second, when you wake up in the morning, do you have this? Uh -huh. And when you go to bed, is it this? And around two o'clock in the afternoon, I think we got it dialed. If there's an elation that comes from actually naming the thing, oh, we've got it dialed. That's the problem. So, you know, for a business coach, they're asking all sorts, instead of just trying to sell their program, they say, wait, tell me your niche again. Huh? No, I think that's pretty good, actually. That's a solid niche. Okay. And then how have you been marketing it? And how many people have you reached? Oh, you've reached two people. Okay. We found the, you know, you get to diagnose <laughs> where is the issue. Um, and that is, it's, it's a beautiful feeling to know we've got it. And that, yeah. The willingness on our end to do that and their sense of this person really gets it. They're not just at the empathy level, they understand the, the 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 pain I'm in, but they understand what's happening underneath the hood. Yeah. Empathy is actually very brief. Mm -hmm. Empathy does not need to be belabored. We don't need a five-page part of our sales that are saying, and then it must feel like this, and you know that reminds you of your childhood, and that was terrible too, which reminds you of a past life, and I feel you in all of it. It doesn't have to be that. It's just, are you going through this problem, and it's really shitty? Yeah, boom, empathy solved. Like you t it doesn't need to be so deep, but boy, the diagnosis does. I mean, this is because when they being in pain is bad enough not knowing why you're in pain is intolerable. So they come to us in this pain and what they want to hear from us, what they don't want from us is to uh, us to try to be their buddy. You know, they, you don't want to, if you're in terrified, you go to a doctor, you have some crazy symptoms and the doctor sits down and says, like, Hey, how are you doing there? So, you know, before we uh, talk about what's going on, uh, I just love to get to know my patients. You know, I like fly fishing. I'm a big fan of it. My father used to take me out fly. And you're just like, okay, no, I don't yeah. care. We'll yeah. find this out later. But can we talk about the thing I'm so terrified about right now? Yeah. What we want is them to be there to hear it and to be trying to get to the bottom of it. Mm. And so if they come to a workshop or presentation, same thing. Yeah. Uh, this is this is great. By the way, folks, if you are hearing anything that you want to remember, <laughs> yeah. uh, that that you know you want to take going forward your takeaways, please comment below. Um, I'm not saying that just because it helps with the video engagement, which it does, but more, I actually am curious. Well, what are you taking away from this? Like, what's what's valuable? Um, oh, yeah. So, okay, I want to ask you this, and um, a lot of people I think in our communities um don't feel like sometimes they don't they don't feel like they're they're solving painful issues mm. like a doctor who is has a patient who needs to needs to have the pain go away yesterday kind of thing but mm. like i i often hear this and see if mm. any of you relate to this george i do such deep work with my clients and and it's just they they you don't know it until you experience it that's why I can't talk about it. You just have to sign up for my nine month program to do the deep work that I do with clients. So transformational. And I, there's no words. If I put, Tad, if I put words to it, it would cheapen the work. Oh, my God. oh it's so painful. It's so painful. <laughs> it's painful for us as, as marketing people to hear that. But, 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 but that's, that's what I think a lot of people watching this and listening to this can probably this George, how did you know? <laughs> well, it, it's the um it's painful in the same way that Hotel California by the Eagles is painful to me now. I believe it's a good song. I can't tell anymore because I've heard it too often. <laughs> it's <laughs> painful to listen to that though. But it's yeah, it's an understandable feeling, right? This yeah. um 
how do we articulate what we do? So yeah, and, and also of, also that it's like it's like well, it's not really that I'm solving an urgent, painful problem, George. Right. It's not. I help people through a transformation. Maybe that they they're even vague about themselves. Dark my clients, you know, they don't. They have this general unfulfillment, you know, with their life. Maybe yeah. they don't they don't even know what's possible, um, and maybe they do. But it's like they're they're finally ready for the deep work. <laughs> it's like the deep yeah. work. Well, it's yeah. So a few thoughts. One is there's a client I was actually just talking with yesterday and he has no discernible niche. But one day we were on a coaching call and I said, wait, how many clients do you have? How's money? It's good. And I got, I got enough clients. And I said, so what's the problem here? He said, well, you know, I just, um, you know, I just don't have a niche. And I said, why, why do you need a niche? What, what is it you want that for? And what we finally settled on, he actually didn't have a problem. He wasn't ready to niche. Money was good. He wasn't wanting to, I was like, just relax, man, enjoy. You've got people coming to you anyways. Whatever yeah. you're doing is working. And we were talking today and he said, you know, what he's realizing is, well, but now he wants to scale it. Ah. There is a kind of organic word of mouth that's happening yeah. for him, but he wants to grow it. And he's realizing that will be very hard if he doesn't niche. And I said, yeah, that's probably you true. You know, what's interesting, Tad, is actually, I, I, I was going to say, um, he thought he had a problem because he believes in your diagnosis so much. <laughs> right, totally. <laughs> he's I heard you talk about the niche and he believes you. And, and yeah, therefore yeah. he's like, hey, I wanted one of those, even talking about it. And I believe you. you know, I believe right, which the is, diagnosis, I believe the prognosis, and I believe the prescription. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which is why I had to do the diagnosis there because it was so confusing. I'm like, wait, what's happening? You're, you say you want a niche, but when we talk about niche, you're so resistant to it. And, and so I had to just say, wait, does he have a problem here? Because the reason you would want a niche is it's going to make your marketing easier. Um, if your marketing is easier, you're going to get more clients and you'll be able to sustain yourself and maybe be very profitable but he was already sustaining himself. And I said, do you want to grow right now? Like, are you really wanting to make a lot more money? No, I'm pretty happy. I like it right now. Yeah. I don't, I don't feel a need to grow. So there's no problem. Right, so, right. but that it proves the point. That is the, the kind of diagnosis we need to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're, you've been showing up so consistently with your content about mm. things like niching point of view that of course, uh, a lot of your people um, rightfully. So uh, you've earned that trust. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to, I want to, uh, well, uh, two, two things. All right. First of all, everyone watching, thank you for being here. And please mm -hmm. feel free to comment below if you have questions for mm -hmm. Tad, um, because that, you know, we have a valuable opportunity to be with him here. And uh, I'm, I believe I can see comments if you put comments in, but it's not a guarantee. So please somebody put a comment. In. I haven't seen any comments yet, but I don't know if that's because my Facebook live thing is not working, but I'm going to refresh and, and, and take a look again to see. Uh, okay, number two, I want to um, definitely circle back to the, I have, I do deep work. It's mm -hmm. not a painful problem. Right. Okay. And third, I want to, I want to uh, not debate, but I do want to uh, share with you kind of my thoughts about niching. And uh, you're, you probably have heard some of our common people come to you and come to you in panic and say, George doesn't believe in niching. <laughs> Tad, what do we do? <laughs> you got to set him right. Um, and, uh, but obviously I, whenever I say this niching stuff, I'm always like my, my friend Tad, I, I, you know, he's, he's got the niching stuff down. Please learn from him. And thank you, Anna, for, for confirming that the comments are working. So I appreciate that very much. Okay. So which one do you want to cover first of, the, of those three things? Those let's talk about the, conversations. The, yeah, let's talk about the deep work because okay. th there's a few thoughts. One is, let's just roll with it's true. Yeah. So then what's important is that you get in front of your ideal clients and first figure out who they are, who the people are best fit, and you give them a taste of what you do. You give them some real experience. I remember, who what, was it... Um. Jesse and Sharla, or maybe it was Eric at me. I remember somebody saying, the way that you are with people, 
let's say when you meet them at a party and you talk with them, that's how they think you're going to be with them in a session. Because we've all had that experience, you know, where you're at a party and you're talking with somebody and they just have such a beautiful stillness and presence and loving, like Jane Goodall, I've had the pleasure of meeting her a few times, and she has that about her, you know? And so then there are certain people when you're around them, you just, can I hire you as a mentor? Can I just, what do you, do you do? Are you a coach? What do you, are you a therapist? Like, how can I work with you? So there is that, that sometimes you just be around people, they get an experience of you, or you lead a workshop, yeah. a small one, and, you know, and you lean on your clients to bring people Maybe you pick particular themes that, you know, will be sort of hits and popular and, you, and, and people come. So that's one thing is you can focus on giving people in small tasters the experience. But also that's what your writing can be. That's what your videos can be is they get the experience of you uh, virtually. And then um, I still, in my experience, when we people come to me and say, but there's no real issue. It's just this deep work. If we keep digging around and exploring, something does usually pop where, ah, that's the thing. They couldn't name it. They couldn't even see it. But there often is some island A, island B there. They just didn't know how to come at it. And once they know what that is, boy, everything opens up. There was a fellow I talked with the other day, puttering session, uh, and he said, um, Puttering session, by the way, for those who don't know, is the, the way that Tad has been offering the one-to-one -one coaching with him. Uh, do you want to say just a, 30 seconds on, on what a puttering session is? It might inspire others who are watching this to do their own puttering sessions with their clients. Yeah, I, I just um, realized I, I like to talk while I tidy. And so that's, I tidy or I go for a walk. I putter on things uh, while I'm on a call with people. So there's no video. I'm not taking notes. I'm not looking at the screen. We're just chatting. And I gave people a discount for that. And um, yeah, so that's the that's the puttering sessions. Yeah, well, and that's a good example of what you're talking about. Like people, they experience a bit of your presence sure, or a lot of your presence on videos or, you know, uh, in your blog posts and things. And then they're like, you know, it'd be lo lovely just to spend some time with Tad, obviously talking about business or marketing or whatever it is, but or 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 not. And, and these puttering sessions are amazing. Um, I, I call this I call this energy signature. I mean, that's the term that I've been mm -hmm. using like a lot. You know, it's like your energy signature comes out in your well. If you're lucky to be in the room with someone, obviously yeah. that's very strong. But but it comes out on video. It comes out in your writings. Uh, it comes out on you know webinars, live videos, whatever. It's like the more someone experiences your energy signature. If there is a match, I feel like if there is a soul group match or some kind of like destiny kind of, if there is an energetic signature compatibility, then there's a there's a there's a connection, and then there's a leaning in, and therefore, of course, I I, I totally agree with you. I think a lot of, I in my opinion, like the best kind of a service provider business, coaching, uh, mentoring, healing, facilitation, counseling, whatever you want to call it. The best kind of business in that realm is when someone connects so much with your energy signature, they, they just want to pay you to hang out with you. Right. The, yeah, there's, um, I was just fine. You got to talk with Jeffrey Van Dyke. Do you know him? Yeah, of course. Yes. Man, reach out to him because he's been thinking about this exact stuff quite a bit and he's got some amazing thoughts, but we can imagine there's different levels of, um, I don't know what you call it, connection or things that need to happen. First of all, there's just the emotional side, which is it's just got, they've either got to be inspired enough about some goal or it's got to hurt enough some problem for them to do something. There's just got to be some emotional oomph to get them as a client, yeah, to to want to spend any money with you. Uh, now, you that also, this is an important thing. You might be able to get away with a very tepid island A and B and it's not that painful. There's no big result they're inspired by when the price is cheap. But boy, if you try to then do a higher end package, watch those people evaporate. Yeah. Um, or, I mean, if they experience something cheap and they enjoy it, have fun with it, enjoy your presence, then there might be enough of a, some kind of, um, like they might believe enough in your point of view to take it to the next step. 
right? Yeah. yeah. But so let's just say, but yeah, that's the second part. So the first part is there just has to be some emotional something on their end to get them to move. Second is there's the logic, right? So they hear your framework, they hear your point of view, they hear your 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 take on things, and they say that makes more sense on this issue than anything I've ever heard. That uh, is important. But then there's also this um, kind of resonance level. You're talking about this energy signature. There's and the way Jeffrey said it, I loved it, was that when somebody is really uh, doing their their calling, I never thought about it like this before. He said, but if you think about it, if there's a calling, then who who did the call who did the call? Who made the call that you are responding to? If there was a calling. And what if there's this community of people? who has been calling you, who needs help. And that's the call you're responding to. And that's your calling is, you know, to, to find them and to help them. And so that when you connect at some soul spiritual level, there's this recognition, like you're the one, um, you know, this, this fit, not just at, a ah, you helped me solve my problem, not just the fit at, ah, that point of view aligns with my, you know, biases and, and uh, all this, but also at some deeper energetic level, there's that. And uh, so I think that's that's also true. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Yes, there is a call from your um, ideal client community. Mm -hmm. uh, they are in the field of potentiality calling out for you. I was doing, uh, I was just, I was just really curious about um, you know, like how many people are in the world that we could possibly reach. And I was running the numbers, okay? So I was like, okay, first let's start with higher income English speaking countries. Right. And I came up it, and it's like something like 500 million, um, yeah. if I'm doing the math right, 500 million people around. And that's actually conservative, uh, conservatively estimated. And then I'm like, okay, out of 500 million English speaking higher income, people living in those countries if it was like um one percent that's five million right that might resonate with mm. i'm sorry 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 ten percent are entrepreneurial that's how that's where i got okay. there next ten percent and it's actually it's interesting in europe it's around more like 15 to 17 percent in america it's more like 10 to 12 percent in canada it's around six percent tad you got you got some work to do Right. Okay. So let's say ten percent. So that's fifty million higher income industry entrepreneurial people. And by entrepreneurial, I, I also you could take the same number and say, okay, people more interested in holistic wellness, or people more interested in personal development or spiritual growth or something like that. So it's just conservative estimate, ten percent. And that's like out of those fifty million people, let's say one percent I could possibly ever reach. That's half a million people. That's 500,000 people. I'm like, in my 13 years of working so hard on the marketing, I've reached maybe maximum 50,000 people. I don't right. have that many on my email list, but it's like maybe 50,000 people have like looked at my stuff for like more than three minutes or more, more than 30 seconds and go, not for me, or uh -huh. maybe, or yes, I'm, I'm, I'm in. And it's like, it's like, there's so much, like I could work so hard for the rest of my life in my marketing and I still couldn't reach 10 times. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, in other words, there is a call, you know, it's like, like we have, that brings me a sense of like urgency and sense mm. of like mission that there are so many people who need our, and who would benefit, who would be delighted mm -hmm. to discover, you know, your, your presence, my presence. And so um, let's, let's go out and do it. Yeah. I, I love this. So you, you, you're talking about there's got to be an emotion. Ideally, there's some kind of emotional pull because of their own challenges or their own yearnings. Yeah. There's got to be, therefore, also, hope, ideally, a logical connection to say, okay, I've got this pull and your framework or point of view, your point of view, your diagnosis, prognosis, prescription makes a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. And then third, there is a kind of a soul you know, we got the heart, got mind, got the soul uh, level, you know, destiny or 
um, vibrational alignment, if you want to call it, where it's like, I, I, I like you. I, I don't know why, but I like you. Or maybe I do know why, but it's like, I resonate with you. I like, I want to be around you more often. Mm. All right. And it's like so many people think that marketing uh, is about getting the words right. Oh, interesting. Right. Right. No. Yeah. Right. It's like, Mark, oh, marketing. Oh, if I just had the right words, does anyone else re resonate with it? If I just had the right words, people would buy from me. Well, that's just a logical level. Yeah, good point. Mo totally. Mostly. It's like, and, and I, what I've been trying to do for, for years is make the case for the soul level type stuff where I'm like, I'm like, you know, tr tr truth, truth be told, I think these are three kind of levers. I mean, we, we, we like talking in this kind of language, right? <laughs> and we like talking about levers and factors. And they, like, these are three, like, if any of these three were strong enough, or there's some kind of mix in between the three, like if any of these three were strong enough, it probably would make a sale. Right. Um, but, and I've been trying to make the case for years that, listen, if, when you show up with content, when you show up generously in either your authentic content or your net caring, you are mostly building the soul level connection, which if that was strong enough, it doesn't matter how fault, how, how you haven't made the case for logic. It doesn't matter if they don't have that strong emotional pull, they'll still want to probably spend time with you and buy from you um, if the soul connection was strong enough. And at the same time, the marketing, the, the copywriters are working on the logic side and yes, the emotional side, but Tad, this is, this is interesting to me. Okay, the other day I was thinking, the copywriters, the people who are teaching us how to get people to buy, they are trying to get us clear on the pain points mm -hmm. and how to get the, what is the um, emotional uh, driver or the, the buying reason from the target audience, right? It's sort of like this mix between emotion and, and the logical. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait a second, shouldn't that stuff happen shouldn't that stuff primarily happen in the product design product creation side like if you like why are we focusing so much just on the marketing side it's kind of like a doctor going a doctor who has like no uh no credentials or no grounded experience solving like your knee pain but it's like let me let me get the really good the best marketer the best marketer in the world to try to sell people on hiring me for knee pain issues when i'm just like i have some possible ideas on it but it's like hey they paid me money now i get to experiment with my clients on the knee pain stuff right? it's like hmm, maybe maybe it should happen on the product level the the service design level it's like we are designing the service or product or program or group or coaching package because we have such a passion for yeah. this emotional driver and 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 a passion for this frame this this point of view well and you know this in, in a lot of ways goes back to the three cases because let's just, well let's just say there is a call and and that that call is coming from a particular community of people who may not even know themselves as a community but they're, they're calling for help so what are you going to do come back um i mean what do you think they would rather when you imagine they're in a village and you come back to this village or come to it for the first time and they say ah you've responded to the call uh what did you bring with you a clear articulation of your pain <laughs> or i brought this thing that will help you with your pain yeah they want us to bring something back to them that will be useful to them in their troubles not just um you know well-crafted empathy um or you know well-crafted marketing that masquerades as empathy yeah they want something helpful and so and i think that that whatever we come up with it's got to be rooted in a very clear diagnosis of their situation which gets into the filtering and niching also but of um diagnosis of whose situation what is the exact problem we're solving but we might say okay if you have this like there was a, a woman on one of my calls an herbalist and she focuses on Hashimoto's thyroiditis that's her thing with herbalism so once you've got that kind of a clear you know uh, call that you're responding to you can have a very clear diagnosis you can become very smart on that issue and so she will then say look there's a lot of things going on with this issue and of course herbalism is only one facet of the treatment there's a lot of other things but you can become an expert on that 
And then she could probably give a pretty good prognosis generally based on, and again, this is generally for that community. It's like, okay, if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and by the way, here's when it's too soon probably for me to work with you. Here's when it's too late. But within this window, here are the possibilities and limitations. And therefore, this is my um, prescription. This is the protocol. This is the general thing I'd recommend. Of course, this will have to be adapted on a case-by-case basis. But if you had to just go off what I'm saying here, here's the general idea, uh, the general set of steps, the general principles to follow, uh, the elements that are needed. Um, And the other thing that I'd say, which ties to your, shouldn't we have this in the product design? Let's imagine there's two levels of the prescription. The first is just the information, just kind of the, here's what you need to do. But there's also integration, meaning them knowing, hearing you make the case is not enough for them to probably change. They're also going to need some kind of support. Now that could be, they may need, and this is where you just have to be honest with yourself, like, okay, for these kinds of people, and if you were one of those people in the past, what did I need? But these kind of people, what do they need to really make this happen? Maybe they need a group they could be a part of so they're not so lonely. Maybe they need some professional help of some kind. Maybe they need uh, some kind of strong accountability. They could use a journal to keep track of this. That'd be helpful. You and, start- and a human being who cares sure. and will follow up with them and will troubleshoot with them and will be present to, you know, ex- accept or sure. integrate their, um, their, their journey. Right. It's like, yeah, it's like, look, you can try to do this on your own. And this is to imagine I'm on stage and I'm, I'm doing a presentation. I say, look, if you're struggling with this issue, you can try to do this on your own. In my experience, here's a prognosis of that. Like that tends not to, people kind of fizzle out and then you just run into problems. So whether, and this is the key phrase for everyone to underline, whether it's me or somebody else, I want to recommend get professional help of somebody who can do these, play these roles for you. And and you can be very specific. You need somebody, if you have this kind of a problem, you need somebody you can speak to once a week for about half an hour where you can troubleshoot this stuff as it goes or once a month. You're going to need, um, you're going to really need a community of people because you're going to want to give up and you're going to need people around you and you're going to need uh, a kind of a curriculum. You're going to need a structure. You're going to, whatever it is that you think people most need, not just to understand it differently it, intellectually, but to actually have the results. What do you think they need? So the the diagnosis answers the question, what's happening? Because they come to us in pain. They know they're in pain, but they don't know why. The prognosis answers the question, what's coming? Yeah, if you handle this, if you don't, what, what does the future hold? And the, the prescription answers the question, what's needed? And so, but the what's needed is not about your marketing copy. It's about the design of your offer. And you design an offer that is what you think people need and what you needed when you were struggling with that, if that was the situation. And then the marketing itself once you've made that case and they say, oh, I agree with him. I think that is what's happening under the surface. And, you know, and, and the aim, the aim of the diagnosis is just to be re, um, accurate. And they say, I think he is accurate. The aim of the prognosis is to be realistic. And they say, you know what? That landed is pretty solid. That's a realistic either way we go. And the aim of the um, prescription is to be effective. And they say, and they sit there and they're thinking, I that is accurate. I think that's realistic, and that is that would be effective. So now they are intellectually sold, but then we need to say, okay, now that you have that, and and let me make also the case for what is needed to take this to the hoop to really get you the result. And they say, yeah, I agree with that too. Then the pitch is just this. So if that all makes sense to you. I have a program that does all those things. Of course I do. Of course I do. Here's the commercial. You know, and you just, and it takes you a few minutes instead of being this long extended thing because the case was already made. You made all three cases instead. And you, you, as an education, as opposed to a a selling thing. Yeah. So it's, you know, what I'm getting from this actually is that to clarify these things, for each of us to clarify these things helps primarily in terms of our own integrity, 
with our product design. Yeah. With our with how we approach the skills that we have, implementing them to help our clients, customers, search students, members, um, et cetera. Because if we if we don't think this through, I mean, first off, if there's no sense of who we help and we're just freestyling all the time, what this means is you improvise with every client you see. You're always having to come up with a new something, a new something, versus if you say, you know what, I'm going to narrow, I'm going to, this is going to be the community I'm going to be serving, and I'm going to really focus on this particular issue or this particular result or however you end up niching. But if you're a service provider, let's say you do that, well, this means you get so smart on this topic. So your diagnosis really does get better and better because you learn more and more about what's involved. You know more of the elements to look for. Yeah. And therefore, yeah, you're able to design um, a kind of a protocol, a package, uh, a program, an offer that really does it all. Mm. Or mm. And or, of course, you may say, I don't want to do all those things. But then in your pitch, you say, look, here are the 10 things that you need to really handle this. Uh, my program does four of them. And so though, if you really want to get the results while you're working with me, you got to go get those other six. So a, a tangible example of this is, so we're going to do this deep healing work. Um, and this may bring up some real big emotional stuff and some past traumas. I'm not a therapist. So if you're going to be in my program, you must be working with a therapist weekly during this. And I need to have that confirmed. So you're not selling that, yeah. but you can still give the, con you can conditionalize what you think is needed for them. And, or you could say, look, mm -hmm. and if you're not working with a therapist, I take zero responsibility for you not right. getting as far because yeah. that's part of the deal. Yeah. Um, before we go further, I do, uh, I do want to touch on this idea of, of niching because, oh, yeah. um, uh, it's, you know, it's brave it, of you, George, to publicly confess how wrong you are. I you know, know I know. It's people. very, and, and it's a tad, same with you as well. No, um, <laughs> we're going to have fun with this. Um, I, because a lot of people are listening to this, like, what do you mean limit myself to a particular community I'm mm -hmm. serving? But before we get there, this is a good sure. cliffhanger. Uh, I want to I do a little bit of commercial, right? And just oh, hopefully sure. this will be entertaining. No, um, I, do wanna, I do want people to know about your upcoming, because, I mean, hopefully we've made the case to this point mm. that it is, it is not only helpful for your marketing mm. to clarify your diagnosis, prognosis, and prescription, but more importantly, in my opinion, it's helpful for your integrity, for your product or service design, which out of which authentic marketing happens, out of which content, okay. authentic content happens when you've got this stuff designed and go, oh, this makes, this makes total sense. Then it's like, oh, of course, content comes out of it. And of course, marketing is very natural coming out of it. So um, you are doing a workshop. So I, some people may be watching this after the workshop. Can mm -hmm. people buy it um, even afterwards? Uh, I will have a DIY version at some Okay, I have a DIY. But those of you who are watching this before March 18, mm -hmm. okay, uh, or whenever you're watching this, click on the link below because um, there, you know, I'm sure you'll you'll be doing it, Tad. Like every now and then, you'll you'll do a live version again. So click on the link below in the description and uh, tell us about this a little bit. So in the workshop, it's focused on helping people clarify the diagnosis, prognosis, prescription for for themselves, and they get to see other people. Kind of so many examples of people doing it and, and support one another a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. There's there are already four recorded webinars also that are about let's say now 75 minutes long each on different facets of this point of view piece that you'll get to watch in advance or after. And then the day itself is entirely hands-on. You're doing stuff. I'll be guiding you through a process asking you what I think are the most important questions to to suss out what is the core of your point of view to figure out the main seeds that you can plant uh and uh, take and run with in in your point of view so yeah i'm very excited about it because it's um it's just helpful sometimes to have some focused time where you're really doing the work so there's going to be very little theory the theory was mostly handled in the webinars but i will also be taking questions uh at some point and then there will also be me hot seating people. So there'll be a few people. I'll just work with them during. So you can actually see that process happen. Um, and it's from, I think it's from nine to five uh, Pacific yeah. time on the uh, 18th. Yeah, yeah, it sounds really valuable. So 
people can either join the workshop, um, just you know, buy into it, or they can join your membership. That's true. And the workshop comes with it. Yeah. So tell us, you know, a minute about the membership. Yeah. So the membership, if you go to marketingforhippies.com slash membership, uh, most of the details are there. But it's just if you resonate with my stuff and you want to work with me more in depth, this is where it all happens. But all my ebooks are there for free. All my courses are there for free. And the community is great. There's, good, yeah, yeah, that's good people. Um, really good. Yeah. So, yeah, that's something I do. It's 100 US a month. Um, and I and I, I I show up occasionally do a substitute do. call. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for thanks for bringing me on every now and then. Okay. Um. So yeah, folks, check out the link below. See if it's for you. If you have felt this conversation to be something you want to do, this kind of work you want to do, well, there's there's the resource for you to to check out. Um. Okay. So we've got like less than eight minutes, <laughs> and so we'll we'll do a we'll do a lightning round on on, on this topic of niching. Okay. Um. So tell me what you think about this idea, right? Like, obviously, I have uh, promoted your niching work all these years. I believe in it, and I tell people to go and, and and do it. And yet, I also have just like both of us have plenty of people in our communities who are like you know, kicking and screaming, like, no, I don't want a niche. Um, and so here's the, here's the sort of the middle ground, middle way that I've, I've been, I've been, that I've been teaching. And tell me what you think about this. You don't have to niche yourself, but it's really helpful to niche your offers. Mm. Okay. So, so mm. an, another way I say it is your personal brand can be as broad as you like it to be. I am George Cow, the coach for all people with all issues, with all transformational needs. Okay. okay. Your personal brand or your personal brand can be as broad as you want, meaning talking about values or talking about a particular you know, vision for the world or whatever. Your personal brand can be super broad. Your website, your homepage can be super broad. And yet your when it comes to each of your service offerings, webinars, programs, packages, it's really helpful to have it narrow as you possibly can. Yeah. So, okay. So these would be my thoughts on that. Yeah. Um, I think that's a very helpful move when people are just profoundly stuck. But like if somebody... First of all, if somebody's stuck around their niche, but they have a, a spouse who's supporting them or they got savings and there's no urgency, there's no problem. To me, then it's like, just, yeah, be a coach for everybody and do do your thing, you know, live it up, enjoy it. That's that's not a problem. But let's just say you got the same coach and now the money's tight and they really do need a response. They need a result, but they're still resistant to kind of globally niching their business. Um, yeah. Then I think what you're talking about is, is uh, not just brilliant, but it's vital because it's it at least gives them a fighting chance of getting a response on that particular offer versus, oh, I'm doing a workshop for everybody about everything, uh, which just will not get a response. Uh, the only response it's going to get are the people who kind of love you, who will come once because they love you maybe, but they're not your people for this offer and they're not going to get a ton of results out of it because it's not really for them. And so there, there, you, there's an opportunity cost of word of mouth that they're not going to be telling other people about it. So, so yes. And I, I talk about this as sort of big circle, little circles. And, you know, sometimes the, the big circle people, it's so broad who they want to work with. And as a, as a business coach, it can be very helpful to have them pick just a little circle for now, for this offer or for this quarter, like, Hey, for this quarter, why don't you experiment with focusing on this? And that can give people the grist for the mill of, did you like that group or not? Where um, I would go with that myself then is I would say, but like what we're ultimately aiming for is a global niche that you're known for. Because it, in my experience, people get known. Well, for, first of all, not everybody gets known. You know, there's some people who really live in obscurity and, and, and just kind of ghosts, you know, nobody really knows them. So being known by any number of people, that's not a given. Um, but if you do get known, you're always known for one thing. Um, Mark Walsh, who you and I know, he was talking about how he was in Lisbon. 
And he was relating this experience of being at the bar uh, with his friends, and he'd meet his friends' friends, and they would introduce themselves. And one of them might say, oh, yeah, you know, I um, I help people with scoliosis. And somebody else would say, oh, you know, I do a bit of DJing, and I do some acro yoga, and, uh, um, you know, and five or six other things. And he said what he noticed later was when he left, he could always remember the person who just had one thing. He could remember what they did, and he couldn't remember any of the things that the other people did. So we're going to be known for one thing, and this becomes the question. What's that one thing you want to be known for? That's the Because people say, well, I don't know if I want to have a niche. And I say, well, that's adorable that you think you have a choice. Because if we look <laughs> at niche as just what are you known for? What's your reputation like? Oh, yeah. you think you're going to get yeah. out of having a reputation. Right, 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 right. But yeah. that, the reputation could be, oh, yeah, they're kind of a new age hippie. Yeah. It could be a general reputation. It could be, um, it could be like for some people, it's like a single word, you know, or, or, or a single book or a single skill, um, mm -hmm. you know, or a single cause or of some kind. We, we, there's a lot more we could talk about this, but it's like, I I think that's true. It's true, like at the bar scenario. What I would also say is that the more someone resonates with your energy signature, the more they can remember about you. Mm. <laughs> right? Like that's that that's also true. Like, like, and 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 maybe we don't need the person at the bar to remember us because it doesn't like like it's interesting. Like when I go to the dog park, right? And if someone asks me what I do, I'm like, I couldn't care less if this person knows me or rem right. remembers me the rest of their life. I'm like, yeah, I do. I'm in business. I'm in. I'm a business consultant. That's literally what I say. And yeah. and then we go on from there. Oh, cute dog. You know, it's like like I'm not trying to get business from here because it's probably not going to happen. It's not the right person. But it's also true that it's also true that I want my clients to be able to more clearly say what I do to their to their friends. Yes. Yeah. And, and and that's where, again, diagnosis, prognosis, prescription comes in point of view. Lots more here. Uh, I think this is a good, good cliffhanger to end on uh, as, 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 as good storytellers <laughs> would do. Pat, it's been awesome. Uh, I love, I, I love you so much and you, I love talking with you and um, it's an honor to be able to share you with my people. Thank you so much for taking the time and thanks for everyone who, uh, for watching. Yes. And, uh, all will and we'll see you down the road uh, somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks everyone. See you all soon.